Hello and uh, welcome to Saki Tech. In this C++ tutorial number 12, we will talk about functions in C++. Again, I highly recommend that you go and watch my previous tutorials so you can understand this one better. In the description below, I have a link to the full C++ programming playlist. Uh, so let's get to business. Functions. Okay, so let's go over a basic concept uh, first and foremost, okay? Integer main is a function. So this whole block here is a function. And if you had, you know, lines and lines of code, oops, of code inside of main, this is still the main function. And when you go and you do a debug, I'm sorry, when you do a build and run, and then you get the execution window here, you know, the console, what is running is everything that is inside of main function. So this is where the program execution starts, and this is where the program execution ends. What you can do with other functions is, you can go outside of the main function, and you can define different functions. Functions such as adding two numbers, subtracting two numbers, finding the average of two numbers, printing stuff on the screen. So you can define different functions outside of the main function, outside of main, okay? But then what you do is, you can call those functions, you can call different functions that you created inside of main. So I can go out here and I can define a brand new function, which we're going to do in a minute. And um, let's say that function adds up two numbers. Then I can go inside of main function and I can call that function. And I can use that function over and over and over and over. Now what we have to understand is why do we need functions? Okay, so one of the reasons you can use functions is to break down a complicated program into simple little modules. So you can have a very, very, very long program. You know, real world C++ programs are actually very complicated. Now if you try to squeeze in all the code inside of this main function, it could get very uh, troublesome. So what you do is you take that big program and you break it down to little functions. And that makes the code more readable and um, just better overall. Number two is that you can actually reuse a function once you create it. And I'm going to talk about a simple example in this tutorial, obviously. I cannot go com too complex here. Um, let's say you create a program to add numbers. I'm saying, I'm sorry, not a program, a function right down here to add two numbers. You can actually reuse that function over and over and over inside of the main. Instead of having to retype the code for adding two numbers. You can just use the function to add two numbers, okay? So if you had a more complex function that not just added numbers, but added them, subtracted them, multiplied them, divided them, you wouldn't have to write that code over and over and over. You would create a function, just one function, and you can reuse that function over and over and over and over. So reusability is another reason why we have functions. And overall, it's just easier to work with a complex problem when you break it down to simple pieces. Just like when you write a book, you don't write a book from A to B. I'm sorry, A to Z. You break it down to chapters. You have chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, or even this tutorial series that I'm creating. I'm not making one long tutorial series in one video. I have at least 20, 30 videos 
each of them broken down to its own section. So that is the basic idea behind functions as well. So let's go ahead and look at the basic format on how you define a function outside of the main function. And how you do that is you do that below the main function. Okay, so let's uh, show you the basic format of a function definition. All right, so the first thing is the type which is being returned by the function. Every function can, if you want it to, return a value. So if, an, if, if a function is adding two numbers, it returns the addition. So the type is the data type of that returning value. So if you're adding two integers, you're returning an integer. So you have to type integer as the return type. So let's do a type right here, and then you give the name of a function. Name of function, okay? And then you open and close parentheses, and inside of the parentheses, you have parameters. These are the values that you're sending down to a function that needs to be processed. So if a function is adding two numbers, you'll be sending number one, and number two down to the function within these parentheses as the two values that are going to be added together. Okay? And the next thing is you do curly braces and you type in a bunch of statements. So these statements are the actual statements that add parameter one to parameter two. So let's just do parameter one parameter 2 okay so you've got the type you've got the name of the function you've got some parameters inside a function and a function can have more than two parameters it can also have one parameter it's all up to you okay and then you've got these two curly braces within the curly braces you've got the statement that you need to run and of course you have to return a value which would be return value. Now the, the type of this value has to match the type up here. So if this is an integer value that is being returned, you have to have integer typed up here. If it's a double variable that's down here, you have to have a double typed down here. So let's uh, remove this, or in fact, let's keep it down there. And I'm going to put a little line here just as a separator let's actually create a real function and let's use this as our guide guide okay so let's say that I'm, I'm creating a function that is going to be adding two numbers and then returning those numbers to main function so what I do is the return type is going to be integer the name of the function is something you're going to choose so add two numbers okay let's make it simple actually let's do addition okay that's cleaner and then you open the parentheses and when it comes to adding numbers you always add two numbers most of the time that is I mean you can add five numbers if you want but we're gonna be adding two numbers today okay so what you do is you type in integer a integer B and the only reason I'm typing integer here is because we're adding integers today if you were adding double variables you would you would um, you would put in double a and double B remember everything in C++ you make it happen so if you're adding two numbers you put in two parameters if you're adding five numbers you add five parameters so this is just a simple example here so the next step is to create a block of statements so we put in two curly braces and let me just bring this up so we don't lose sight of that okay and here what we do is we can declare another variable integer x okay and then we can do x is a plus b and then what I do is I return b okay so did you understand what happened here we declared a brand new variable x 
and then we added a and b and we assigned a and b to x and then we're going to return i'm sorry not b x okay so that is equivalent to this uh, format so you got the type of the function name of the function the parameters the function is going to take statements the function is going to run and the value the function is going to return so i'm going to take this off so remember the value the function returns has to be of type integer because that's what we're saying the function is going to return in the first place now let's go to the the main function and see how we can call this function this function inside of the main function okay see you can call different functions inside of main so let's um do this let's say um i want to print the addition of seven and nine all i have to do is let me declare a variable z okay integer z z is assigned to i'm going to do a you know what five plus ten i'm going to do five plus ten here's how you call a function addition i'm sorry addition five ten and then you put the semicolon so what happened here was we called the addition function with the correct number of parameters parameters now we already know we only can have two parameters here so that is why we sent only two parameters if i sent three parameters here the function obviously wouldn't work there you you get some kind of error so so that's how you define a function and this is how you call a function okay and what happens is when this function executes the value down here x gets returned right here and then it gets assigned to z and one final quick observation right here this integer x okay has nothing to do with the main function or this integer z has nothing to do with this addition function down here these are variables that are local to their functions okay so this integer x is local to the addition function this integer z is local to the main function so you can create as many variables here as you want independent of the main function the reason we create this one here is just to make the program cleaner so i had an integer x i assign a plus b to x and then i returned x just remember the basic format of a function definition and you'll be fine and up top here this is called a function call and when i write my programs i usually do something like this i do function definitions just to clear it from the main program so you guys can see it and up top here i do something like this start main okay so this kind of keeps it clear then i do a copy and paste put this at the bottom and down here I say end main and then anybody that is looking at your code can immediately see here's where the main function starts and here's where it ends and here they can look at the function definitions now when you put the function definition below the main function this is not going to work so what you have to do is you have to put a prototype of this function above of main so let's do one more thing right here so let's do function prototypes just to make it clear so all you do is this is the way i like to do it so all you do is you copy this and paste it right here and you put two i mean i'm sorry just a semicolon right next to it this becomes the function prototype this is not the actual function it is a function prototype and you need to have it up here before main 
So the basic structure then uh, summarizes to you, 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 you create a pro prototype of a function, you write the main function, and then you write the actual definition of the function. Within a prototype, all you need is the type. Within a prototype um, statement, all you need is the, 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 the value returned, name of the function, and the parameters that it takes. And this is something you just have to do for the program to run. Otherwise, the program is not going to run. So let's uh, run this program. Hopefully, there's no errors. So let's do a build. Everything looks fine. There's one warning. Okay, what we didn't do was we didn't actually print anything. So let's do count Z. We're going to print Z and put a new line. Save this. Build and run. There you go. We got 15. So let's quickly go over the main function and see exactly what happened. So we start the main function. We declare the variable right here. Then we assign to the variable the addition of 5 and 10. And we do that by calling the function addition. Remember the keywords. Okay? Prototype above of main calling the function inside of main and defining functions underneath of main function and with when you define a function you can start first by defining and then you can just copy and paste this top section as a prototype upstairs but remember this time to put the semicolon you have to have the semicolon now you can also write functions that don't return any values okay so if this function returns an integer value if I did not want this to return any values I would just type in void and that means that function does not return a value why would I have a function like that just maybe to print something okay if I want to print an introductory text about a program uh, telling the user what the program does I can create a void function that doesn't return anything and that doesn't take any parameters so let's do that real quick let's um take this off kill this whole thing and also destroy this so what I want to do now is create a function that prints just a set of instructions or an introduction to the screen so what I do is I, I the return type is becomes void name of the function print intro it doesn't take any parameters okay you can have a function with empty parameters and then what you do is you go down here you do your curly braces that is standard and then you type in C out this program adds two numbers okay and then C out and uh, just putting a new line. In fact, let me put one more new line just to be clean that up a little bit. Save this. And remember, when you write a function definition at the bottom of main, you can just copy this whole thing and paste it above of main as a prototype. And you have to put the semicolon right there. So how do I call this function in main? I actually just call this function by typing print intro. Okay? Because this function is not returning any values, I don't have to assign this to a variable. This function is simply printing stuff. So what's going to happen is the main function is going to call the print function and it's going to run these statements. So let's do that real quick. File save. Build and run. There's a problem. One errors. What are we missing? We're missing a, a semicolon right there. Right here I was missing a semicolon. So save. Build and run. Okay. There you go. If you can't see it, just look right here. This program adds two numbers. So this is um this would be just to keep the main function. See how clean the main function looks? 
And then I can come down here, I can just be like, Z's assigned to edition 5 and 10. It just looks so much more clear this way. You can, ex you can see exactly what's going on. It's all modular. You print the information and intro, you add two numbers, and then you can actually create another function that print print results. And then the main function looks nice and pretty. It's broken down into simple steps. Okay. Now it's not this. This is not. This is a poor example. If this example was more complicated, then you would see the point of breaking down complex programs into simple uh, functions and then putting them all together just like this. Okay. Let me just take these off because they don't belong here. These 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 are not going to work right now because we don't have them defined and we don't have the prototypes up there. So take this out, okay? Save this file. And that brings us to the end of this section of functions. There's more to functions that I'm going to go over in my next module. We're going to talk about functions where you pass parameters by value or by reference. And you know, don't worry about what that means right now, just we'll talk about it in the next module. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. Click the like button if you liked this video and have a good day.